But at least a few of the right-wing outlets said, maybe there's something wrong going on here. Maybe there's something a little off. And every day that we ignore this more, the crisis gets worse. And these people, we hear the people over there screaming, refugees are welcome. For some reason, they're never talking about the white South Africans. For some reason, they're never talking about the Boer. Despite the fact that the Boer people are some of the most resourceful, hardworking, amazing people I have ever met in my life. They love their culture. They love their families. They love their freedoms. And I understand why so many of them, they don't want to leave. They want to protect that. They want to preserve that. The land they are on is not stolen. And anyone who knows the history of South Africa knows that to be a fact. Surprisingly, last week, one of my best viewed videos in a while was talking about Veraboos, these online communities who are massive simps for the German military in World War II. Now, I thought this might be a fun sort of sequel to my alt-right sub communities video because there seems to be a lot of weebs or, or boos for different different subjects. So today we're going to be talking about we are boos. Now different people say boo differently so I'm trying to say it as Afrikaans say it but when I was taught about this stuff in school we called it boa other people call it boars, but apparently it's more like boer, so let's call them the we are boers. So essentially what these people are, are mostly white South Africans, but a lot of the time also white conservatives in the West, who say that apartheid and the apartheid government was better than South Africa today. And they are also simps, I found out lately, for the South African military during the conflict in Angola, where they essentially got their asses whooped by communists and the Cubans. But we're going to get into all of that later. But how this video is going to go is we're going to talk about things like white South African farmers and how this hysteria came to the West. You guys might remember people like Laura Southern and Stefan Molyneux talking about this stuff maybe about three years ago. We're also then going to talk about a little bit of the history of South Africa and we're going to talk about the alt-right figures involved in spreading this myth about land reform. Then, just like with the Veraboo stuff, we're going to go into the Reddit communities and online comments about apartheid. And then for the last bit, we're going to talk about simps for the apartheid military. But before we go any further, edgier content on my channel is always demonetized. So if you want to support me monetarily, please check out my Patreon. Thanks so much to everyone who has already done this. At the moment, the benefits are gaining access to the private Discord server. And you obviously have your name featured at the end of every video and in the description. I'm working for some other benefits that will come in the future. If you want to join our growing community, please check out the Discord and the subreddit in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, check out at the Cavernacle on Instagram and Twitter. And also you slash Tommy Cahill 1995 for my personal Reddit. So with that out the way, let's get into the video. Also for every 5k we get a new chocolate orange. I've changed the style of the little um, formation I have going there. So we're on 24 now. Chugging along to 25. When I get to 25, we'll get a new chocolate orange. Also, I'm trying to live stream two times a week. So we streamed on Tuesday. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow about midnight my time, maybe a bit after. Hopefully, we're going to do that every Tuesday and Thursday. So it'd be good if you would join me. So apartheid is a fairly well-known topic. Now, the history of the region of Southern Africa is fairly complex and complicated owing to the fact that there have been multiple countries that no longer exist anymore, countries like Rhodesia or the Orange Free State or the Transvaal. And a lot of these countries were made up of white minority rule. Some of these territories were ruled by the British, others were ruled by Dutch colonialists, Afrikaans, and the Boers essentially are the farmers, and you might know them from the two Boer Wars, Fun fact, and something I didn't find out until about five months ago, is that my great-grandfather fought in the Boer War, and as an Irish person, I thought that could only mean he fought in the British Army, because a lot of Irish people did fight in the British Army. Turns out he was actually in the IRA, and a lot of the IRA went to go fight in the Boer War against the British Empire. So that's just a fun fact in my weird connection 
to this period of history and this region. But of course, apartheid in South Africa, as we kind of know it today, started in 1948, following a long legacy of racism and racist laws in these territories, stuff that inspired Nazi Germany along with the US's own race laws. And it represented some of the most brutal and outright racism, the same sort of ideology as groups like the Nazis. And of course, it was a small white minority controlling the wealth and power in a majority black country. And unsurprisingly, whites in South Africa still hold a disproportionate amount of territory, farmland and economic power and that's where the land reform stuff starts. Now like I said before the land reform myths were spread throughout the world in 2018 and we're going to get into how these are myths and they were pushed by alt-right figures in South Africa itself, people who wanted race wars, people who long for the old apartheid government. So The Atlantic did a good article back in 2018 titled The Dangerous Myths of South African Land Seizures and this is when it became mainstream news in America. So last week, Donald Trump watched Tucker Carlson on Fox News and got mad. That's not exactly news, but what happened next was the president tweeted a message of support for South Africa's white farmers, tweeting, I have asked Pompeo to closely study the South Africa land and farm seizures and expropriations and the large-scale killing of farmers. South African government is now seizing land from white farmers. So throughout the Carlson program, the screen blazed with... Chirons asserting that South African land sieges had already happened, and this was despite them having not actually seized land. And it was also emphasising the violence, but it's not true that South African farmers had been massacred by black South Africans, as a lot of people have been saying. But the article says that while South Africa is extremely violent, has so much violent crime, US-funded scholarship has shown that rural violence is overwhelmingly concentrated among the poorest and among those with only a primary education who are very unlikely to be white. But this whole issue does centre around proposed changes to the constitution, so getting into the land issue. So the relevant history here is not the Native Land Act of 1913, but the tradition of political power in 1994, that comparatively bloodless and harmonious transition was achieved because really only because it guaranteed existing property rights. This guarantee was codified in the South African Constitution of 1996. It specifically addressed the grievances left behind by the 1913 land settlement and authorised restitution of property to those deprived of it in 1913, not only to individuals but also communities, especially important since much of the land assigned to white owners in 1913 had never had an individual African owner, but the new constitution also affirmed that any person, trust, or corporation that lost land for the purposes of historic redress was entitled to fair compensation. Now, going against the hysteria and all these myths that black people, urged on by the government, are taking over white land and killing white farmers. So, the Globe and Mail did a good article that was how the fate of South Africa's white farmers became a myth used by Trump and the far right. And it just talks about how this actually hasn't happened because of the gridlock with the legislation in terms of redistributing the land. So one reason to anticipate long delays is the track record of South Africa's own post-apartheid history. The ruling party has promised land policy changes since 1994, yet little has changed. The vast majority of private commercial farmland still remains in the hands of white farmers, Hobbled by corruption, institutional weakness and legal confusion, the ANC government has lacked the technical capacity and political willpower to make any substantial changes in land ownership, despite the persistent inequality and continuing land scarcity for many impoverished black people. In 1994, the government set the goal of transferring 30% of agricultural land to black owners by 2014, but it's fallen far short of the target, somewhere between 9% and 21% of farmland, has been transferred to black people over the past two decades, studies have found. Now, the Pulitzer Center did a good article on this about the myth of white genocide from James Pogg, and it just talks about where this redistribution of land comes from, and he's writing about the history. So it's easy to forget today, in the years since Nelson Mandela has become a liberal saint, the victory over apartheid was not a product of tidy pacifist resistance to political injustice, The ANC's guiding Freedom Charter, adopted in 1955, declared the need for land redistribution. The land shall be shared among those who work it, and the document is a revolutionary manifesto calling not just for democracy and political equality, 
but for the redistribution of land and the nationalisation of mines and industry, the Charter recognised that the political equality would be meaningless without wealth redistribution since whites long ago handed themselves control of the country's natural resources, one of the first pieces of segregationist legislation passed by the newly independent Union of South Africa was the 1930s Land Act, which barred whites from buying property from blacks and vice versa, at a time when about 90% of the country's land was already in white hands. And just to outline the racial disparity of poverty, the article also says, Today, 14 million South Africans live in extreme poverty, often in informal settlements or conditions that are no better, there are a tiny number of whites who live in squatter camps, 13,000 of them according to a 2016 estimate, and the plight of this minute slice of the South African poor has been very heavily reported on. In 2013, the amazing impartial BBC repeated a wildly inflated estimate by African rights activists that up to 400,000 whites were living in camps, which is a number that it later became clear that the activists had made up on the spot. It's now been repeated countless times. So although that was quite long-winded, hopefully I outlined the issues with land reform in South Africa. It essentially is that the ANC ran on this radical platform of redistributing the wealth in South Africa, meaning that while most of the agricultural land was owned by whites, their target was to redistribute that to make it more fair for most of the population. But as these articles show... They've been so hung up on these issues that they've barely done anything to these ends. And also the statistics show that the murders of farmers in South Africa has gone down. But it didn't stop this myth from being perpetrated. So where did this myth come from? So another article by the SPL Centre, The Dangerous Myth of White Genocide in South Africa, goes on to say collaborations between the alt-right and their South African counterparts have ramped up in the last year. Stefan Molyneux has done a series of videos warning about an imminent civil war in the country when he interviewed some of the most prominent names on, the South, on South Africa's far right, including Simon Roach of the Seatlanders group anticipating a race war in South Africa. And then in May, apartheid apologist Ernst Ruetz, deputy CEO of the white nationalist Africana group Afroforum, met with staffers from Ted Cruz's office as well as representatives of USAID and had a photo op with John Bolton and appeared on Tucker Cast. So they pushed this myth about the farmers being murdered and taken off their land. And this article goes on to say, contrary to sensationalist reporting of escalating violence against white farmers, the long-term trend shows a decline. Farm murders peaked at 153 in 1998, while violence against farmers hit a 20-year low this year. 2018, 47 farmers were murdered in a one-year period. An official committee of inquiry formed to investigate the farm murders found that robbery was the motive for the vast majority of the 2,700 attacks studied, whereas racial motives accounted for 2%. So thanks to the galvanization of the far right around the world, a lot of so-called liberal people picked up on this stuff and platformed this stuff, talked about the plight of white South African farmers with their land being stolen and then being slaughtered in, you know, huge numbers when it's simply not true in either case. White people in South Africa still hold on to most of the farmland. White people in South Africa still are far better off than black people. White people in South Africa are still holding on to the gains made from the colonial period and apartheid, and the government has not done enough to tackle this despite the ANC running on this platform. Now, this has led to more radical groups calling for forced takeovers of this stuff. There is that sentiment in South Africa at the moment. The economic freedom fighters are one such group, which are pretty radical, talk about killing these white farmers and everything, but they're the radical fringe who feel like the ANC have let them down. And make no mistake, there is a lot of dissatisfaction with the ANC in South Africa because of the blatant corruption of people like Jacob Zuma, because of their relative ineffectiveness, because of multiple things they're letting the country down on. And of course, South Africa has, has a lot of problems with violence and income inequality and everything like that. And I guess this is where the we are burrs stuff comes in now because people are starting to say especially white Afrikaans, that apartheid is better than today. It may have been better for white Afrikaans. I wouldn't say a real massive legal system designed to discriminate against 
you know, various races, particularly black Africans, is a good thing for anyone. But let's get into the We Are Boers comments. I know you're here for these stuff. So, so most of these people I find weren't actually alive during apartheid. So it adds to this element of people looking back, thinking the past was greater despite not actually living through it. So here's one tweet. My grandfather used to tell me about the situation we are in now, saying that during apartheid, things were better than they are now. The only issue in the past was discrimination. Not all pe- but all people had jobs, clean cities, no corruption, no borderless crime rate was low i'm sure a system that puts a white minority in power uh, and gives them all the rights to the economic advantages didn't have any crime and didn't have yeah that was perfect clean cities so another guy says sad but true as bad as apartheid was both blacks and whites are better off in every single way so it has a meme basically saying was apartheid better listing all the ways apartheid was better so, of course, this guy is a centrist as well. But nice bit of irony there for you. Someone else saying, it's fair to say most blacks are better off during apartheid. A guy with, I think, a British fascist lightning bolt saying, apartheid was technically good and Nelson Mandela was a terrorist. His terror activities cost the life of 22 plus people. Here is another sentiment you're going to see a lot that Nelson Mandela uh, was an evil madman terrorist with no reason for doing what he did. So there's a subreddit I want to highlight that it is rsa so you know republic of south africa but there is a south africa subreddit which is very popular this one only has ten thousand, so it's the politically incorrect one and i'm guessing most people in here are white africans or white westerners so in one post talking about the eff i was talking about you know the more radical group wanting this land reform and being more outwardly hostile to white people So uh, someone says, are you trying to imply that the ANC is worse than the apartheid government? This guy's saying, yes, 100%. So the other guy's saying, so corruption is worse than treating innocent people like lesser humans. Aren't you worried that you're a racist? The other guy's saying, who said anything about corruption? I'm actually talking about the ANC's racist policies towards whites. I was born long after 1994, that's a surprise, which means that I was not even conceived when apartheid ended, but I'm punished because of the colour of my skin. You're the racist. Also, I'm talking about the ANC condemning the brutal murders of farmers. I'll go as far to say that they're the ones paying for it to happen, and I know that that's not something we're allowed to say. Gosh, a communist government who covertly killed its own citizens. Unfathomable. So another post saying apartheid flag is ruled as hate speech, and then someone saying there's no such thing as an apartheid flag. It's a union flag. The flag has been around since 1928. Apartheid didn't start until 20 years later. Constitution gives everyone the freedom of expression. Unless it advocates that hatred that is race-based, this flag has nothing to do with race. These idiots fail to realise that they're slowly chipping away at everyone's rights and freedoms. They also fail to realise that it will eventually include them as well. Now, just like America having all these state flags with the Confederate stuff on it, and, you know, the, the Betsy Ross flag that Colin Kaepernick was talking about, some of these flags don't have an explicit racial connotation, but a lot of them are Boer Republic flags. Places where there was insane racial discrimination against black people, and obviously taken up by nationalists who still wave these flags around. So it's not surprising that people would see them as racist, especially if it's from a relic of a system from the past. You know, he's saying apartheid didn't start until 1948. Well, what do you think it was like before then? Do you think it was somehow not racist? Have you even like looked at any of the regions around them? Loads of them still had legal racial discrimination against black people and other minorities. So um, de Klerk apologises for statement that apartheid was not a crime against humanity. So de Klerk was the last leader of apartheid South Africa. He was a deputy leader under Nelson Mandela as well from the transition from apartheid. Someone say he shouldn't have had. Someone else say betrays his own people again. Not surprised at all. But pro-apartheid ex-Bax club that calls Mandela evil terrorists makes headlines in the UK. Look, these guys have that flag that was banned for hate speech and a comment saying... How dare they use accurate descriptions? So again, the anti-communism stuff, someone else posted, just going to leave us here, and it's a, a Nazi swastika and the hammer and sickle of the Soviet Union saying, so if this offends you and this doesn't, you're a victim of the system, a prisoner of ignorance. So another post, British far-right protesters want London's Nelson Mandela statue torn down, and someone saying, your sainted Nelson was a terrorist and personally responsible for several bombings and the loss of innocent lives, but hey, you probably see Che Guevara in the same light. When um, Nelson Mandela's daughter passed away, people commented, my thoughts go out to that racist family in this time of mourning. Someone else saying she dead. So you have the South Africa subreddit, which is just a general South African subreddit. Not really that bad, especially compared to what I've been showing you. But it posts, a man rides a bus in Durban meant for white passengers only in resistance to South Africa's apartheid policies, 1986. 
someone says, this sub is rabidly anti-white. How is that anti-white? Posting a very heroic photo of a man protesting apartheid at a massive risk to his own life. This kind of post is designed to inflame anti-white feelings in tandems with the clicks debacle. Someone asks, how is this anti-white? He says, because it drags out old scars and directly implies whites are rubbish, which this sub strongly advocates, it perpetuates a thread of distrust towards whites and does no good in any sense. So this is a funny post I saw in Bad History. Aside from racism, apartheid was a pretty good system. So someone comments in, actually, things worked a lot better during apartheid. Not talking about the awful race shit that went down. Everything worked and was maintained properly. Since then, corruption has skyrocketed and nothing works properly anymore. South Africa basically went from being run like a Western country to being run like an African country. So this guy is crazy racist and is saying that, you know, the, the racism in apartheid was bad, but now the country's bad because it's run like an African country. So you see a lot of this sentiment and it has risen due to all the myth about South African farmers. When I read you the statistics about how much they still own the South African white farmers how much they're not being murdered, especially for racial reasons, and how much the ANC isn't actually doing anything right now. And then you see all this stuff, you just conclude that these guys are just racist people who yearn for the apartheid era back, rather than people who have massive grievances with this farm stuff. This is just a propaganda issue. And now I'm not saying that ANC and South Africa doesn't have corruption problems, which probably feeds into these people thinking apartheid was maybe good, but again, how can you discount the awful racial discrimination? I also love the thought that somehow a government that is based on racism isn't corrupt. Again, you're literally not giving people economic opportunity or equality because of the color of their skin. And that's a fair system. That's not corrupt. But you know how Trump supporters are still trying to cope with him losing the election? We are boers are doing the same thing because they got their ass whooped by the communists. Uh during the Angolan Civil War. So this war went back and forth for a long time in the 70s and 1980s, and Cuba, pretty consistent with their foreign policy in Africa, sent a lot of support to the Angolan communists. Now, Cuba had already helped independence movements in Algeria and Congo, but it really doubled down on Angola, and 10,000 Cubans were actually killed in the conflict, which is a higher proportion of their military and, and population that died in that conflict compared to US forces in Vietnam. So these guys were very, very committed. And in terms of the propaganda, the Cubans said that, you know, Afro-Cubans are going back home to liberate their brothers from, you know, the white apartheid rule. So essentially it was the Soviet Union and Golden Communists and Cuba versus South Africa, Britain and the United States. So a lovely apartheid military, the, the military of a fascist government trying to invade an African country to get rid of communists fighting for liberation. But these guys are all simps for the South African apartheid military. So although small, I found another subreddit called South African Border War. And like I said, they're trying to cope with being whooped by the communists. So um, you have various pictures of South African Air Force combat planes, different tanks, that are being deployed in Angola at the time. Here's one that says, Cape Corp soldiers on riot control training. Back in the day, and still today, the ANC and their followers were extremely violent during riots. These oaks knew how to stop one extremely quickly. And contrary to popular belief, with few to no casualties, I'm sure the racist apartheid soldiers would never ever hurt the violent ANC protesters. So I just commented, glad Cuba whooped your asses. Um, someone said, stunning image, mates. Probably to show you the political leanings of these people and how they are we are boos. Here's another one. Rest in peace to this onerous crux, decorated hero, pathetic that a government can allow its veterans to be slaughtered by the same communist terrorism they once fought to destroy. So the South African right, particularly the white South African right, clearly have a problem with communism as well. Clearly, they're still coping pretty hard with being beaten by the Cuban and Angolan communists. And at the time, the border wars did send shockwaves through South Africa because this white army, which believed they were racially superior to Africans and to Cubans as well. Let's not forget how white supremacists often view people from Spain, Portugal and Latin America that essentially they're a mixture of, you know, in Spain's case, Muslims and Jews. In Latin America, they're a mixture of natives and African slaves and white people. So you're not actually the same as real white people. But Mandela and Castro and a lot of people in South Africa and on the South African left do credit this, 
this sort of conflict with galvanising them in the latter stages of apartheid because it essentially showed the South Africans with all their military might, you saw that there, with their Western backing, backed by the US to fight the Cubans, to fight the Soviet Union, to fight the Angolan communists, were beaten. And they had to negotiate peace with these forces and they had to go back home. Again, the South African military had never been beaten in such a way, so it was very damaging to them. And like I said, still haven't gotten over the communist thing, being beaten by the Cubans. Now to conclude the video, Veraboos and the like are far more common on social media and on Reddit. They push way more myths and they're way more popular, I guess because World War II is more popular. But Weaboos is still a thing that happens, and I think, really, it's been galvanised in Western circles by the land reform propaganda and the land reform myths. Because it seems like, when you really delve into the, to the statistics and everything, it's quite a non-issue in terms of, is this really happening? But when you have the Western media and the governments of the US being sold this lie by far-right figures, far-right Afrikaans in South Africa... It caught on. You know, like the new atheist movement started talking about this stuff. Loads of people started talking about this stuff like it was a massive reality. Like the white farmers who still control most of the agriculture were being killed at the behest of the government. Again, just not happening. But I think it has led to the rise of we are boers. And you see a lot of the myths online that everyone, including black people, had it better during apartheid, apparently. And I wonder who's saying that. Like I said, I believe it's mostly like Gen Z people who weren't around during apartheid and they're white Afrikaans. Because I doubt most black people who live through apartheid would say today, as bad as South Africa is in many aspects, yeah, I want to go back to that. But anyway, that is it for We Are Boers. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Follow me on social media at The Cavernacle, Twitter and Instagram. Come join our communities on Discord and my subreddit, all that stuff in the description. Please check out my Patreon. Of course, this video is demonetized, so any financial support is appreciated. And again, live streaming Tuesday and Thursday nights. Come and join that. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.